In this series of videos, I've been taking a look at ray tracing in games such as Cyberpunk 2077, Control and Resident Evil Village and looked at how ray tracing is used. Today, we're going to take a look at the recently released Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition where 4A games released a version that only runs on GPUs with ray tracing hardware. And that's because the game now sports a fully ray traced global illumination system that is not backwards compatible with previous rasterization techniques. So in this enhanced edition, there is no possibility to turn off ray tracing. As a result, I spent quite a fair bit of time playing both the Enhanced Edition and the original version of Metro Exodus from 2019 and try to capture some footage that would show off the differences. So as the Enhanced Edition only sports ray tracing techniques, is this a glimpse of how games will render their graphics in the future? Let's find out. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more gaming videos like this. And we have a Discord channel, so make sure to join that for more discussion, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Before we begin, let me tell you the specs of my PC. I'm running Metro Exodus on an i9-10900K at stock settings with 64GB of DDR3200 memory, an RTX 3070 graphics card, and the game is installed on a 1TB SATA SSD. And as to not confuse viewers, I'll call the original Metro Exodus from 2019 the original version, just to differentiate the two versions a little bit more easily. Let me first start by talking a little bit about ray tracing and global illumination, and then we'll get to the comparisons between the two versions of the game. According to the 4A Games developer blog post, a ray is a straight line in 3D space. Light travels in straight lines until it hits something. This is why we have the term light rays. A trace, in this context, is a type of search. Scenes in video games are comprised of many triangles, polygons, located arbitrarily throughout a 3D environment. The search, in this case, is searching for which polygon that each ray intersects with. Therefore, a ray trace should be thought of as sorting through the scene's geometry data to find which polygons lay in the path of a specific light ray. The closest of those polygons to the origin of the ray will be the surface that the light ray illuminates. Now, rasterization is also a technique that you'll often hear used when describing a game's graphics. According to 4A Games, rasterization can really be thought of as just drawing individual triangles to the screen and doing further processing on whichever pixels they cover. So, in a game using standard rasterization without ray tracing, the developer will have to determine the results of lighting themselves using experience, intuition and their artistry. With ray tracing on, it's the GPU that determines the effects of the incidental light rays and how it affects the look of the scene, though the developer can still tweak variables as they wish. Finally, global illumination can be defined as the process that simulates indirect lighting like light bouncing and light bleeding. As Nvidia explained in their tech demo, global illumination can give graphics a more realistic feel. Going from the original Metro Exodus to Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, the developer notes two big changes to the global illumination system. In Metro Exodus Standard Edition, ray trace global illumination came mostly via just a single light source, the sun and partly the sky, so no candles, torches or any other sources of light. In the Enhanced Edition, up to 256 light sources can define a single pixel's final result. In other words, a great many different types of light sources can contribute to the shade and intensity of a pixel in the scene. Secondly, the Standard Edition previously allowed for a single bounce of light ray to color a pixel. This was particularly noticeable in indoor areas where light rays from a window would bounce inside the room and affect the scene. With the Enhanced Edition, the developers added dynamic diffuse global illumination with recursive bounces. This adds more bounces of light by sampling the information of the previous frame which would then affect future frames. In other words, the previous frame's color information could affect the future frame's results until that light is fully absorbed in the environment. 
The opening of the game is a great way to immediately see the differences between the Enhanced Edition and the Standard Edition. Here you can see the extra bounces of ray tracing and how that affects the scene. Even though it makes the darker scene brighter, the ray tracing has affected the scene so that it provides light to areas where it's supposed to. With the single bounce light in the original version, light has a harder time getting deeper into the tunnel. Here is the comparison between the original version with ray tracing on and off. In this next section, the Enhanced Edition allows ray trace global illumination for various light sources such as this flame and allowing infinite bounces around the scene. And this colors the roots and the walls in a more orange glow. In contrast, the original version with ray tracing on is far darker as the light source is not ray traced. Similarly, in this scene, in the Enhanced Edition, the fire now being part of the ray tracing and infinite bounces creates an orange glow and lights up the wall in the background. Whereas in the original version with ray tracing on, the fire, while very cool, dark and atmospheric looking, doesn't light up the wall. If you look at the scene with ray tracing off, there is almost no difference indicating that there's no ray tracing occurring and the only difference is the reflection off the gun caused by moonlight that has leaked through. Some gamers may prefer the darker scenes of the original, though that is also arguable how useful it is when it is very difficult to see anything. Here you can definitely make out more of the environment in the Enhanced Edition and the scene still gets plenty black in many areas. One reason why a ray tracing implementation is important for developers to master is that with the computer calculating light rays there is no fake or baked lighting and manually adjusted shadows that are developer created. Colors and shadows are consistent throughout the game. For example, in this scene from the original version of Metro Exodus in the ray trace version, there is no light shining through this window, whereas when ray tracing is off, there is a light source placed outside the window. Here you can perfectly see in this lower ground floor area of a building how much more light and more detail there is in the enhanced edition. This scene is also interesting because if you turn off ray tracing in the original Metro Exodus, you can see that there's already not much light in this scene coming through from the light source, which means that both the ray trace and non ray trace version are going to be a lot closer in color and shadows. In this cutscene where the time of day should be pretty close, in the Enhanced Edition you can easily see more of the infinite bounces of light at work. What that means is that the man's Yushanka feels like it's better lit, where you can see all the detail. It's a little less atmospheric at times, but it also means the bottom half of the scene is properly lit and the red floor of the van can be seen. In this shot, you can see how the Enhanced Edition delivers a different shade of color on the walls. The Enhanced Edition has the light source bounce off the walls, absorbing and reflecting the colors of the wall and gate that results in more of a mix of brown and gray. In this cutscene, in the Enhanced Edition, look how the fire illuminates the boxes facing the camera. But in the original version, as the fire is not ray traced, the boxes remain dark. One thing we haven't really talked about is ray tracing reflections, and that's because until you get to the lake in Volga, there really aren't that many reflections to speak of. But as you can see here, global illumination generally doesn't add too much to the scene in outdoor areas and whether you have ray tracing on or ray tracing off, the reflection results are generally pretty good. In both versions of the game, the church is absolutely stunning with the use of exterior light shining through combined with flames throughout to give shape and depth. And notice as we're about to stop the boat how different the final result is through ray tracing with infinite bounces. Of course, it's possible the time of day is different outside, but it seems like the intensity of the sunlight is similar, but the inside of the church is lit different. Here, in this very dark dungeon-like area, there is a single shaft of light coming from above, but with the help of the water below, that's enough to reflect some light around the environment and allow the player to see more. 
Here, in the area where the player has to hijack a passenger car, the train shed is pretty dark and devoid of light, but in the enhanced edition with just a small amount of light source from the moon and the flame torch on the wall, the area is better lit and is easier to make out enemies. The enhanced edition can get pretty dark still, as you can see crawling under the train carriage, it is almost pitch black. One thing that is super interesting is how time of day works with ray tracing. I didn't capture this for enhanced edition, but it should be pretty similar to the original version with ray tracing on. But here I have footage from the original version side by side with ray tracing off on the left and ray tracing on on the right at different times of day. In the ray trace version, the shadows are dynamically produced and adjust with the time of day. You can see how dark it is at night time, but as dawn approaches gradually, you can see the shadows get softer and the rest of the train car get more visible. However, with ray tracing off, while the light source still penetrates through, the rest of the carriage still produces dark shadows. Effectively, there's no bounce light to fill out the room. So, in summary, at first I was a little underwhelmed playing Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, particularly in the introductory levels before getting to Volga. But once I got there, I began to notice impressive uses of light, color and shadows to make the game look great. And then of course, playing the original version afterwards, it is noticeable due to how dark some scenes can look and how much clearer the Enhanced Edition makes it. It then became very obvious putting the scenes side by side to see what ray tracing global illumination can do to a game. As for performance, running on an RTX 3070, the performance is really good at 1440p. I used ultra settings for everything and managed around 70 FPS by eyeing the frame rate counter every once in a while. I believe 4K60 is also very achievable on an RTX 3070, though perhaps you would need to bump down some settings to high to get there. Overall, I believe 4A Games did a great job with ray tracing here, certainly the best performance I've seen from a ray trace game so far. And the next game I'm sure will look even more amazing. That's it for this one, if you like this video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.